Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update. This month, Howard Community College looks to take down the number eight team in the nation. Women's basketball battles the defending Region 19 District O champions and a profile of new men's basketball head coach Jay Dahl in this month's Dragon Close-Up. We'll start with men's basketball. The Dragons host Nassau. Mike Lushner anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Our analyst finished his career ranked fourth on the University of Wisconsin's all-time scoring list. It's a pleasure to welcome Chuck Nagel to the show. Mike, it's a pleasure to be here this season. The coaching change was the offseason's biggest headline. After winning the Maryland JUCO regular season championship, head coach Mike Smelkinson left Howard to take the head coaching job at Harford. Former Coppin State assistant coach and McDaniel College head coach Jay Dull took over at Howard. Coach Dull's Dragons enter the game still searching for their first win. Howard's coming off a 22-point loss to Baltimore City. Chuck, what do you expect to see from the Dragons? I'd hope they'd uh, come out of the locker room tonight, Mike, with fire in their eyes. As you mentioned, uh, they're up against a good team. They've dropped their first two games. They need a win at home, especially at home. Their forte is to bring the ball up the floor, push it as much as possible, and finish at the rim. I think also a key tonight would be their perimeter shooting. They've got to break down the Nassau zone defense. Nassau's 1-0. They enter the game ranked 8th in the D3 preseason poll. The Lions are the defending Region 15 champions. They won 29 games a year ago and finished 4th at Nationals. Chuck, what does Nassau like to do? They're a very strong team this year. They've got two outstanding uh, post players, two forwards who can hit the boards hard and score pretty much every time they have the ball. They rebound well, as I said. Uh, they'll also try on defense to create havoc, I think, for the Howard offense. Howard takes on Nassau next. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half, 13-point lead for the Dragons. Willie Key drives into the lane, takes on the Nassau big man, and emerges with two points. Excellent job by Willie Key, who penetrates nicely through the Nassau zone for the jump shot. Kavion Green holds in the rebound for Nassau. Lions in transition. Steven Pandalis. Key forces the turnover, takes it the other way. No look pass, Connor Gaskins and one. Quick hands by Key, strips the ball. Starts the three-on-one fast break. Finishes with an outstanding pass to Gaskins for the layup. Nassau on a man-to-man -man defense. He takes it inside, back out to Aaron Brown for three. Devron Goodwin hustles for the rebound. Finds Brown, absorbs the contact, and banks it in. Dragon playing hard. They lead by 16. What led to this play, Nassau's poor blocking out on the defensive boards allows Goodwin to save the ball and assist on the basket. Ian Vasquez goes to Key, storms the paint. Key is getting to the basket. Eight first half points for the sophomore out of Baltimore. A very porous 2-3 zone here allows Key to drive right down the lane for the easy basket. 15 seconds till halftime. Jaleel Charles up against Gaskin. Keys takes it away. Willie Key on the run. Extends the lead to 10. Second half now, Shaquille Waldron brings it up for Nassau. The Lions move it to Charles. Howard in a very, very loose man-to-man -man defense here. They give up the baseline, which is a no-no in the coach's handbook. Charles puts it away, and he is going to the line. The sophomore out of Far Rockaway, New York, comes out of the locker room fired up. Nassau still in that 3-2 zone. Perfect way here for Howard to score against the zone, get the ball to the middle. And Gaskin sinks the mid-range jumper and extends the lead to eight. Eight minutes remaining. Vasquez to Key. Once again, this time the pass comes from the top of the key, just like Coach Dahl diagram. And Jamal Eggleston knocks it down. 62-54 Howard. Next Howard possession. Eggleston kicks it out to Key. Goes left. Oh yeah, sensational and one. 10 point lead for Howard. Once again, Willie Key flashes down the middle for a chance at a three the old fashioned way. Four minutes to play, Nassau on an 8-2 run. Vasquez to Key. Oh, aggressive play from Edwin Sainville. Pays off, draws the foul, and he will go on to knock down his free throws. Nassau here taking a page from the Dragon playbook. Ball to the middle, turn, score. Charles cuts the lead to two, and he'll go to the line. The Lions big man playing with passion late in the second half. Three minutes now, Howard's lead down to one. Gaskins looking inside, broken up by Charles. Waldron secures possession for Nassau. Nice move. Beats two defenders and gives the Lions the lead. The momentum belongs to Nassau. 
140 remaining now. Two point lead for Nassau. Ian Vasquez goes to Brandon Roberson. Roberson, no one to pass to, finds a hole. Nice runner for two. Roberson ties the game. Nassau keeps it moving behind the arc. Waldron from downtown, wide open. Charles with the rebound. Draws the foul and he's going to the line with one minute remaining. Charles makes one of two. Gaskins pushing it up the floor. Banks it in, but he's called for the charge. Tough call here. Was it a block? Was it a charge? Gaskins gets called for the charge, followed by a technical foul on Coach Dahl. 29 seconds left, and after the free throws, it's a three-point lead for Nassau. The Lions go inside to the big fella. Hooking foul called on Charles. Looks to me and to him like it could be a makeup call. Dragons go to Willie Key. Flies into the lane, and he picks up a foul here. Key would go on to sink both free throws and cut the lead to one. 18 seconds now. Howard brings the press. Key picks off the inbound pass. Key for the lead. No good. But an excellent play by Aaron Brown. Fighting for the rebound. Draws a foul. Brown makes one of two. We're tied. 12 seconds. Nassau beats the press. Ian Vasquez hustles back on defense. Alan McDonald rushes the shot, and Eggleston comes down with the rebound. Timeout Dragons. Five seconds on the clock. Tied at 74 now. Eggleston to inbound. Who else? He goes to Key. Key, up the court, into the lane. Oh, he got it at the buzzer. Willie Key takes it coast to coast for the game winner and the first win of the Coach Dull era. Not often do you see a 94 foot drive, five seconds on the clock, ending up with a game winning shot like that. Not only does Key weave his way down the floor, but throws up an electrifying shot and puts Howard in the win column. Let's send it down to Jasmine Harris. Uh, tonight was our first win of the season. How do you feel about it? It feel great. Uh, we started off slow, you know, 0-1-2, but we all came together as a group, you know, really had a good week of practice and got very prepared for the day, and we came out strong, and it just feel good to get a W. I don't like losing, so just feel good to get a W. Like Coach always said, trust the process. I mean, yeah, we went 0-2. This week of practice was real, real hard. Real hard, like, we was exhausted. But today we came out and showed people that we can really play and we got talent. So we're going to really shock the world this year. So in the past two games, uh, y'all done had a problem with the 2-3. What was y'all success in the 2-3 today, beating the 2-3 today? Getting in the gaps and seeing the open man hitting shots. We definitely hit big shots today. And I believe we, we can keep doing that. Willie Key, you scored the uh, game-winning layup. So before the... Before the layup, uh, what was you thinking on your way down the court dribbling the ball? Honestly, I was just thinking go to the cup. Um, I, when I got when I got cross half court, I kind of scanned the floor and see who was open. And I looked up at the clock. I saw it was like three seconds, so I knew it was enough for me to get to the cup. And if they ain't stop me, just keep going. And the ball rolled my way this time. It went in. For Dragons Lair update, I'm Jasmine Harris. My next guest came to Howard Community College from Coppin State University, where he served as assistant coach for the past nine seasons. He's coached at the college level since 1985. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Jay Dahl to the show. Welcome, coach. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. How do you think your team played against Nassau? We, uh, it was kind of an up and down seesaw game. We got off to a great start, which I'm always happy to, to do. Um, and then we kind of had a little lull, and as, uh, as the game went on, they, they gained some confidence in terms of the things that we were trying to do to disrupt them. And they came back, and, and uh, we with, withstood their, their comeback and were able to finish and, and beat a very good basketball team. So as a first-year coach now, you know, what are your goals this year? Well, in terms, I, I'm, I've never been one for you know, this many wins, you know, getting a championship, doing it. My, my whole thing is, like I said, to teach effort. And um, our, our goal is to become the best players that we can be, to be the best team that we can be, to be the best coaching staff that we're capable of being. And um, not that we're trying to drive for perfection, but 
we're in a we're in a situation where we want to teach everything that we're trying to do, and we want that constant effort every time that uh, that we get on the floor. And if we do those things, everything the winning and those things take care of himself. So so. Our, our, my ultimate goal for this team is to become the best team that we're capable of being. And then you just let the chips fall where they may. If it means a championship, it means a championship. But if you don't take care of the base, then you never get to the, to, to the top of the pyramid. So we start at the bottom, try to build our guys, try to mold them to, to the type of team and the players that, uh, that we want them to be. And then they got to either accept that or not, and then we motivate them in other ways if we can't get them to go in the direction that we want them to go. Now, you have a big counseling background. Um, how does counseling help you in working with athletes? Well, I think anytime you're dealing with, with athletes, you're, you're looking at individuals and not you know, a, a set type of person. You gotta, you gotta understand that everybody's different. And, you know, I just had a conversation with one of our players. Coach, you don't treat us all the same. Well, that's not my philosophy. My, I, you can't treat everybody the same because everybody's a different person. And some guys will respond to you just going right down their throat, and other guys need the pat on the back. And as a coach, you've got to understand and decide what type of individual that is, and, and with it being early in the season, we're still trying to figure a lot of our guys out. But, uh, you know, so there's no real set way that you can deal with every individual. It's, it, you, you gotta treat people as, as, as individuals as opposed to, you know, a group. Good luck the rest of the season, Coach. Bring your energy. Thank you very much, we'll do that. We'll have a profile of Coach Dahl later in the show. It's time for more men's basketball, Howard, CCBC Catonsville is next. Let's go to Mike Leshner. Thanks, Diane. Howard's 4-2 since the win over Nassau. The Dragons are 1-2 against fellow D2 Region 20 schools, and they can improve to 500 in the region with a win tonight. Chuck, how can Howard beat Catonsville? It's going to be a very tough time, very tough time tonight. Howard's going to have to reduce their turnovers, take excellent shots, rebound on the offensive glass, and play very, very smart, very smart game. They've got to know when to push the ball up the floor, when to stay back and be patient. And they've got to stay out of foul trouble. CCBC Catonsville enters the game with a 4-5 and five record. The Cardinals have won three of their last four, and they're fresh off a 36-point win over Montgomery College. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Catonsville tonight? Catonsville's very hot. They've got an excellent team, a lot of guys returning from last year. They change defenses from man-to-man -to, -man to zone defense, tough to play against. They want to create turnovers that lead to baskets, and they'll put up as many shots as humanly possible. However, they have struggled on the road this season. A Region 20 win is on the line. Howard battles CCBC Catonsville. Let's go to the Dragons' lead. First half now, Robert Goodwin leaves it for Brandon Roberson. Back to Devron Goodwin. Oh, he's stripped. Khalil Carroll with the strip, leads the three on two break, and a great pass to Quinton Jackson, who beats everyone up the floor and converts the transition ball. Jackson, inbounds to Willie McDowell, who goes back to Jackson, who goes back to McDowell. Howard in a full court press, great ball movement up the floor by Catonsville, creates the easy basket. And Tyler Hunter inside extends the Cardinals' lead to four. Catonsville changing defenses now from zone to man to man. Very tough to beat. Ian Vasquez goes to Josh Jones. He's guarded by McDowell. Jones back to Vasquez. Vasquez creates space. Nice jump shot for the two. Khalil Carroll takes a look at his options and goes to McDowell. Dragons in a 1-2-2 zone. Perimeter passing by Catonsville leads to a spot-up jumper from Carroll. And the sophomore out of Suffolk, Delaware, extends the Cardinals' lead to six. 11 minutes till the half. McDowell up against Jones. The Dragons in a man-to-man -man defense here, but no backside help allows Scott the easy layup. Howard moves it along the outside to Terrell Willis in the corner. McDowell hauls in the rebound. Lowers his shoulder, barrels down the floor outside to Marcus Knight, and he buries it. 11-point lead for Catonsville. Howard brings the press. Knight goes to Carroll. 
Eggleston scraps and claws for it. Roberson secures it and he goes to Key. Oh, and he beats two defenders on the way to the rack. Great move from Willie Key. Where does he get this stuff? Howard stays with the press. Carroll, good pass ahead to Knight. Oh, denied by Austin Wosu. Jones gets it, catches Eggleston in stride, and after two quick Howard field goals, Catonsville needs to talk things over. Jackson checked by Jones. Hunter comes out to set the screen, but Wosu is there to back him up. Loose ball. Roberson comes up with it. Howard defense creates the turnover and just does beat the Catonsville team down the floor for the layup. 32 in black, Tyler Hunter comes up, sets the screen. McDowell uses it, opens up Jackson for the three, and CCBC Catonsville is on a 10-3 run. Four minutes to the half, 12-point lead for the Cardinals. And another interior bucket for Hunter. CCBC Catonsville shooting 60% from the floor in the first half, and they lead by 12 at half. Second half now. Vasquez gets the ball inside, and Wosu can't get it to go, and a great quick decision from Khalil Edwards sends it to Jackson, one-on-one -on -one in transition. Tips his own rebound and goes to the line. 15-point night for the sophomore out of Princess Anne, Maryland. Three minutes remaining and a 14-point lead for Catonsville. Goodwin into the heart of the Cardinal defense and a scoop shot. He gets it to go. Final minute now, and the lead is down to six. The Dragons bring the press. CCBC Catonsville able to slice through the defense. And Howard has to foul here. Cadensville very effective with those long overhead passes to get the ball down the floor and set up that offense. The Cardinals' short bus ride to Columbia pays big dividends. Cadensville gets the win. Let's send it down to Jasmine Harris. Uh, tonight, after the game, what's your thoughts? Um, I felt we came out a little sluggish in the beginning. Uh, but the second half, we played really hard, and I think we pl the way we played the second half, we'd have played down the first half, we'd have got the W. After tonight's loss, how do you bounce back? Um, I think we just come together as a team, and Thursday we got practice, and we go at it and take it out on the next team we face and remember this loss and how we felt after it. For a Dragon's Lair update, I'm Jasmine Harris. It's time for women's basketball. Howard goes up against Essex County College. The Dragons enter the game with an 0-3 record, looking to bounce back against a program that they've had success against in the past. Howard has won their last two meetings against Essex County. Chuck, how can Howard get the win? The key tonight for Howard will be the play of their, their two point guards, Gina Booker and Lauren Thompson, uh, who both must be very, very patient when they bring the ball up the floor against a pressure zone, the pressure defense, full court defense from Essex, and a key free throws, the ability to make free throws against a team that is very prone to following. Essex County College enters the game with an 0-1 record. The Wolverines are the defending Region 19 District O champions. Three starters return from last year's team. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Essex County? Expect to see a lot of running, a lot of havoc created both on offense and defense. Essex a team that needs to exert full court pressure. They need to push the ball up the floor on offense and rush the offensive glass. They're a very good rebounding team. They start two forwards who can shoot the ball very well from the outside. In addition to a post player, very strong inside game. Howard and Essex County take the floor next. Let's go to the Dragons Lair. First half here, Lauren Thompson takes it up for Howard. Essex picking up the Dragons full court, falling back into a 2-3 zone. Thompson picked off by Shaniqua Graves. Thompson at the point tries to make a pass to the wing, just makes a bad pass, which allows Essex to get the advantage coming down the floor. And Graves converts the transition bucket. Ten point lead for Essex County. Kim Richburg to Randy Welch, back to Richburg. Howard now in a 3-2 zone, trying to keep Essex on the perimeter. They'd like Essex to take that shot from the corner. They do when she makes it. Welch has seven first half points, and Essex leads by nine at the half. Essex again in a full court press, trying to create turnover. Thompson now ahead to Patrice Jones, and she lays it in. Great job here of Patrice Jones taking the pass and going right to the basket for two. Howard opened the half with seven unanswered. Gina Booker takes it inside, leaves it for Jones, and she knocks it down. Gina Booker dribbles baseline. Great assist to Jones for that jump shot. The Wolverines' lead is down to one. Richburg. Back to Ginny Jean. 
Essex with great ball movement here against the Howard 1-2-2 zone, setting up Richburg for the long three-pointer. Jones bringing it up for Howard. Bounce pass to Liz Parks. Oh, and a nice lefty finish off the glass. Liz Parks with a very strong move to the basket. Wolverines now keep it moving on the outside. Richburg, down low to Welch, open for the layup. Essex going to the low post here very well, but just no weak side help from the Dragons. 143 remaining. Welch to Marcel Richards. Bounce pass to Jean. Back to Richburg. Inside to Graves, she shoots and it's no good. Great hustle on the rebound by Thompson. The Dragons now in the double bonus, so a chance for two free throws, which could tie the game. Thompson would make her free throws, and there's 39 seconds remaining all tied up. Essex County looking to run the shot clock out. They lose track of time, and Richburg from long range. Booker takes it the other way for Howard. Beats Richards, forces Richburg to come out, connects with Jones, and Essex sends her to the line. Dragons on a 3-1 fast break. What a gorgeous pass from Booker to Jones. Patrice Jones at the line, looking to give Howard the lead. Jones hits her first free throw. And with the second one, Jones gives Howard a two-point lead late in the second half. Nine seconds on the clock, Richburg brings it up. Broken up by Gina Booker, Richburg gets it back. And the Wolverines call a timeout. Three seconds remaining, the plan for Essex. One pass, one quick shot to win or tie the game. And once again, they go to Richburg, who gets to the lane, but can't get it to fall, and Howard wins. The key to this win for Howard, remaining in the 3-2 zone, forcing Essex to shoot from the outside, and the ability for Howard to make free throws when they counted. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Patrice, you and the girls were down nine at the halftime. What was the key to the comeback? Um, the key to the comeback is that we came, went into halftime, we came back, we talked about defense and stepping up and just communicating, and it seemed to work out for us. Liz, uh, how did the communication improve in the second half? Uh, second half, we knew we had to talk a lot more, especially on defense. That definitely helped us in the last nine seconds of the game. So, yeah. Patrice, how did it feel sinking those free throws to seal this one? be honest, I was a little nervous. I was like, I did not want to miss them, <laughs> but I calmed myself down, I shot them, and I made them. So I was like, whew. <laughs> Go Dragons. <laughs> no. <laughs> During the comeback, what were Coach Anderson's words? How did he inspire you and the team, Liz? Well, he told us from the beginning we needed to box out and play defense. And yesterday, we didn't do that. So we knew today we had to come in, play great defense, uh, talk a lot more. That's been our biggest downfall. But throughout the game, we saw that the more we talked, the better our defense is. And that really helped us near the end. Congratulations on a big team win, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. For Dragons Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Let's go to Mary Lee Adams for this month's Dragon Close-Up. HCC has a new basketball coach who is heating up the court, enforcing high-intensity practices and a strong work ethic in all facets of life. Coach Jay Dull has high hopes for this young team and is using his experience as a coach and mentor to take them to new heights this season. Coach Dull brings vast experience to the table with over 35 years of coaching basketball. He has challenged himself with tackling all levels from junior high all the way to Division I basketball. Before I came here, I was at Coppin State University as an assistant for nine years. Before that, I was a head coach at McDaniel College out in Westminster, Maryland for four years. And before that, I was an assistant at Towson University for four years. Uh, before that, um, I was a head coach at a school called Grandview College in Des Moines, Iowa and I was an assistant at uh, a school uh, called Loris College, and I was also athletic director and head coach at Mount St. Uh, Clair College in Clinton, Iowa, and before that I was a high school and junior high coach, so, so I've been around a while. I actually met Coach Dahl back in 2009 when I was with Coppin State University. Me and Coach Dahl always had talks every day when I'm up in the office and we talk. He actually knows a lot about basketball, a very amount of basketball. He's been coaching for 36 years, so. Coach Dole's approach has come as a challenge to his new players, testing their abilities both physically and mentally. But all seem to agree that his full throttle style is paying off. He's very demanding out of, out of his players, tries to get a lot out of his players. Um, I, like, I like the fact that he, he puts trust into and to the players that he has in the system. Yeah, it's definitely intense. Uh, you basically try to install that the way how you practice is the way how you play. So if we're 
just not doing what we're supposed to do in practice, that's definitely going to uh, reflect how we're going to play it. Uh, his approach is really to get right to it. And that's how we, you see us play. We're right in everyone. So he, he gets right to it. He doesn't like no wasted motion, no wasted time. He doesn't want you to rest. You know, I try to get these guys to understand that whenever they step on the floor, they have to be ready to play. They have to be intense. They have to have enthusiasm for, for what they're doing. Coach Dahl has become known at HCC for his unique game plan. This plan involves a constant full court press that requires an immense amount of stamina and focus. We like to press after makes and misses. Most young people have never had to press after a missed basket. They usually sprint back and build their defense from the inside out. We like to start, stop a break at its inception. So that's a little bit different for the guys. Constant press, honestly, not a lot of people could do it. But if we got a group, a great group, uh, group of guys that are actually willing to do it, it will definitely wear out the um, your, the team that you're playing against. It's tiring, you know. It gets you in shape, but at the same time, I know that it's going to help me going to the next level because I'm sure my next college won't be playing as fast. Though basketball is the name of the game, Coach Dull's teachings go beyond the court. His lessons and mottos are ones that will stick with these players for years to come. I see it as a great opportunity to get individuals to uh, th that that are hungry to play guys that are hungry that are looking for scholarships um, that might have a chip on their shoulder and um, I see myself as a mentor and a teacher and I think that the junior college level is one of the best places for a mentor and a teacher to be he's taught me a lot more than just more than just basketball because he always has these these principles like one is ACT, that's one thing that we go by, it stands for Attitude Changes Things. And that's for basketball, but it's also, you know, you can take it to a real life situation. He definitely enforces that you're a student before an athlete. Take care of what you have to do in school, and it's definitely gonna reflect on the court because nobody's gonna take a kid with all the talent in the world, but yet still, still um, struggling on his math or his English. He would give us books to read, not long, real long books, you know, short stories. And it, it all ties into, you know, more than just basketball. It's real life situations also that you can apply those things to. It isn't every day you come across a coach as passionate and dedicated as Coach Jay Dahl. And what makes it even better is that this career path is one that he always knew he would take. I knew I've wanted to coach since I was in the seventh grade and I've kind of built my career towards that. I knew I wanted to coach at the college level and, and I started off as low as you can get. I started off at the elementary school level coaching and worked my way up to Division I basketball. So, so uh, you know, I have some experience if guys want to listen to me and understand that you don't have to start up here to get up here, you can, you, you're probably going to start down here and have to work your way up to get there. And that's pretty much in any profession that you're in, and it's the same thing with athletics. With a seasoned veteran in the coaching arena, HCC men's basketball team seems to be in good hands with Coach Jay Dahl, emphasizing academics and instilling hard work and motivation on and off the court. For Dragon's Layer Update, I'm Mary Lee Adams. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash HCC Dragon Sports. A new Dragon Slayer update premieres Friday, February 6 on HCC TV. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!